Pacific Northwest forests are iconic. They provide us with clean, cold water, clean air, and abundant recreational opportunities. But we're losing Pacific Northwest forest to wildfire at an unprecedented rate. Wildfire is really resulting in the loss of these large old ponderosa pines that we've come to love and cherish. So we brought together leading experts from the University of Washington, the Department of Natural Resources, the US Forest Service, to help us better understand what's happening in our forest ecosystems in the East Cascades. We're losing a lot of our large trees and old growth trees in our dry forest ecosystems in Eastern Washington. And part of the reason why we've gathered all of you scientists here today is to help us better understand the drivers behind the loss of old growth and, and large uh, trees in our dry forest and the things that we could do collectively to try to address the risk of, of losing more of these trees in the future. The Schneider Springs fire burned in the mountains outside of Yakima, Washington, near Chinook Pass in 2021. So it's a great place to learn from the effects of fire and to bring our scientific experts to evaluate what's effective. What can we do to prepare our forests for future fires? Garrett and I, when we were scouting yesterday, we picked this spot in part because the area below the road received no treatment. A fuel treatment is anything that reduces the likelihood of an uncharacteristically severe fire. The most effective form of fuel treatments for these dry forests is going to be a combination of thinning followed by burning. So when we look way up into these trees, we actually see black the whole way up. So there is enough fire all around these trees that even though these trees are not supposed to actually crown out in a fire, they did. Ponderosa pines are naturally fire resistant because they have thick bark that protects them. They also have branches that are much higher off the ground than other species of trees. So the fire is unable to climb into the tree and up to the top of the tree. And so when we see really large areas where ponderosa pines have died from fire, what that tells me is that there was really a missed opportunity to do something before that fire happened. What's gonna replace these guys? Like, what are we gonna see here in 10 years or 20 years or even 30 years? We may not get a lot of trees that come back. We may get a lot of shrubs, um, grasses, and it could take decades or even centuries for trees to get back in those patches, if at all. I like to think about uh, the large old trees as, as, as the backbone of the forest. They store most of the carbon. They're critical for a lot of wildlife species. They provide the seed source for new trees. And so when you lose these trees, um, it, it is much harder to have a forest that, that is resistant to wildfire as, as well as drought. So we lost you know, over 6,000 acres, 7,000 acres of old growth forest in one fire. Bam, 7,000 acres just in one fire. And that's happening all over as these fires happen, right? And these trees are not coming back, right? It takes 100 years, 200 years, 300 years to get to the state. And we, we could have saved this tree. You know, if, if we'd done the treatment here, this, this tree could have been alive. Dry, frequent fire forests depend on fire and have been stewarded by fire for thousands of years. But when you take that fire away, that fire is now no longer something that restores forests. It is something that can threaten forests. So this site up the hill actually had three different treatments between 2008 and 2013. And then when the wildfire occurred 10 years later, there was much less surface fuel. This stand is now more receptive to future fires. Almost all of the trees that remained after the treatments survived the Schneider Springs fire. And so we would deem this successful restoration. So what we have to do is create the conditions that those forests are adapted to that is important for stewarding them so that they can survive future fires and future climate change.
We're outside of the perimeter of the Schneider Springs fire, which occurred in 2021. This is a really kind of representative condition of what the area looked like prior to the wildfire that burned. So yeah, we're seeing a lot of grand fir here, especially um, in front of us, as well as some, some smaller dug fir. That's what, what, when we have a fire, carries that fire up into the tops of the trees. And then I'd also talk about this crowding of these smaller trees providing too much heat, too much fire to outright kill these trees in a wildfire. So if we do get a wildfire here, this forest is set up to have a lot of tree mortality. I would just add that it's really not a question of if it's going to burn, it's really when it's going to burn. Most of our forests in Eastern Washington are in an unhealthy condition just have too many trees, which makes it really easy for fires to spread rapidly across landscapes. In order to uh, you know, keep these forests, these old trees that we currently have into the future, they're gonna need some active management. We could just start with removing some of the small diameter trees, right? Like thin from below. I'd probably take out uh, maybe half of, of these Douglas fir, and we're gonna keep some of these small trees out here, but we're gonna remove most of the small trees. We could come back through with some prescribed burn after that. A lot of people think to protect old growth, we have to stay out of it. That idea is killing these forests. For these forests to be healthy, they need regular management, whether that's prescribed fire, whether that's wildfire, whether that's thinning. These forests rely on that, that regular uh, disturbance and need that to keep them in a more open condition that is what, what is resistant to wildfire. We really have to change our mindset about how we think about what a healthy forest is and recognize that, yeah, we need some dense forest on the landscape, but we, we are missing our open, large tree component. We, that is the forest that we've lost. It's both exciting and hopeful because we have something proactively that we can do that can make a real difference and is making a real difference in the world. Scientists overwhelmingly agree. There is no debate here. Fuel treatments work. We know what to do. We have everything in place to do it. And we can save these large old trees.